mean everything to me because I know you mean everything to Christ. And Christ means everything to me. And I called on the Lord. I said, yeah. the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise him up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. Are they doing it? Garbage, man. Stop trying to look to the white Jesus to save us, man. White Jesus never promised you. Let me ask you a question. What God? Name me a God that promised us justice from slavery. Name me one God that promised us justice from slavery, man. We gotta forget about slavery because we want we to follow your God. You know what I mean? We serve a God who promised us justice, man. Guess what? Because if you never get justice, if you never get justice, you can never be worth anything. If you never get justice, you can never be worth anything. Why he had to stop yelling? I didn't ask you that. Why he had to stop yelling? Why he got to start stop yelling? He had to stop yelling because you want to yell. But why does he have to stop yelling? You came up here and said, stop yelling. Why does he have to stop yelling? Are you his mother? Are you his mother? You think everybody out here is your son that you could just boss around? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Oh, oh, he all in the inter He ain't got no man. That's right, you ain't got no man. I, listen, God ain't your man. I'm gonna tell you straight up, God ain't your man. You, you tell me, give me what I ask for. Oh God, Go ahead. look at First Timothy chapter two, verse eleven. Let the woman learn in silence. Say it again for the woman who thinks she a priest. Let the woman learn in silence. Say it one more time. Let the woman learn in silence. But well, listen, God said you should be quiet. God said you should stop yelling. You said God is your husband, right? Let's see what God says. Oh God. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 11. Let the woman learn in silence. With all subjection. With what? With all subjection. With what? With all subjection. Let the woman learn in silence. 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 But I'm reading your husband's words. I'm reading your husband. Oh, you read my Bible. Wait, hold on. You want my Bible? I got mine. So why you want mine? I read. What did I leave out? What did I leave out? What did I leave out? Read it again. Oh God. Let the woman learn in sun. In what? In sun. It means you should shut your mouth. That's right. That's what it means. Uh, you should stay mouth. quiet. Shut your and, mouth. And if you had stayed quiet, then men wouldn't have left you. Right. It wouldn't have been men. You would have kept that one. You didn't get it. Listen, you married God as a last resort because he's some imagination in your mind that will never walk away from you. That's why you have to invent a husband because you wouldn't shut your mouth. Read it again. Let the woman learn in sight Go ahead. with all subjection. Go ahead. But I suffered not a woman to teach. But a what? A not a woman to preach. But I what? But I suffer. But I what? But I suffer. What I what? Suffer. God said, I suffer not a woman to teach. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor a nor to assert authority over the man. I suffer not a woman to teach. Or to usurp authority over the man. Right. You want to usurp authority That's over right. every man. That's so right. you got to marry God. You are Christian as Christian could be. Right. Let me tell you in the rule number one, woman, shut your mouth. Right. Shut your mouth. Right. Stay quiet. Listen, if you stay quiet, guess what you'd be doing home right now? You'd be in that bubble bar. You'd be had that that um that that nice Jack Daniels on the on the um, nightstand because you're waiting on your man. You're waiting on your man. Hope you answer say, I want to tag my husband. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> Y'all said all night you said 
Listen, the general's so right. Hey, listen, you you would have had a home. You would have you would have, wouldn't, have, wouldn't even be worried about being homeless. Wouldn't worry about being hungry. You wouldn't have to worry about nothing. Guess what you would have been doing? You wouldn't have been trying to battle young men in the streets who are trying to save the lives of black people. Right. You want to make this about you because you ain't got no man. A woman needs a certain amount of attention. It's called maintenance. You got to maintain her. You got to give her some attention. That's why young little girls, you got to pick them up and swing them around. Daddy's princess. You got to give them that because without that, they become cold and bitter and delusional and think you can marry God. The Bible say, the earth is my, the heavens is my, is my throne and the earth is my footstool. A man that big, how could you manage it? How could you manage it? I would like to know. I would like to know. Read it again. Let the woman learn and serve. Say it again. Let the woman learn and serve. Tell, tell her where you're at. So she can go the book of 1 Timothy, uh -huh. chapter 2, verse 11. Look, get her to the pages because she don't know where it is. I thought she was a priest. Right. I thought she was a priest and a prophet. She don't know where it is. Catch up to her in the page. Turn the page faster. Turn it quick. Turn it fast. Hurry up. Get to the page. Get to the page. Listen. Listen, she low key enjoying this little sister. She enjoying this. I, I know, sis. I know I know that masculine energy been missing from that household. I know I know you wanna buy us all a drink right now. It's all good, sis. Thank you, brother. I know I understand, sis. I understand it. Listen, you, you could come up in here. I'm sure there's a brother who might be interested, might be, be in your pretty wood. If you'd shut your mouth, if you'd stay quiet long enough that he could look at you and see something beautiful. But your mouth just make you look so, I talk like a Jamaican, so ugly with the itch. Your mouth, what comes out your mouth? Christ, listen, Christ, listen, Christ said it. It's not what goes into a man's mouth that right. makes him unclean, but what proceeded out of it. And you wouldn't shut your mouth. Right. Close up the sewer. Close it. Put a manhole on it. Read. Let the woman learn inside uh -huh. with all subjection. With what? With all with all subjection, with all subjection, right. you gonna have to yield to a man someday. But that imaginary God in your mind—oh, you can't find it. You can't find it, priest. So wait, you don't even know your husband's words. I'm just ignorant. You got a mic, but the dad, the blah 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 blah. Why are they putting mic down? Because you say so. Oh, you don't like a man yelling. You don't like a man yelling. I just ask you a question. Do you like a man yelling? Yeah. Good, good, good. I don't need a mic. Good. Because you should you gotta, shut your you mouth. You, you should shut your mouth. But you're going to remain without a husband. You're going to read it. Read it. That's the book of Ephesians, uh -huh. chapter 5, verse 22. Why? Submit. Say it again. Why? Say it again. Why? Go ahead. Submit yourselves onto your own. <laughs> Damn! Listen, listen, sir, you tell me she don't need a man? She get a chair and sitting right down with her, with her mouth closed. That's right. If your sisters in D.C. don't understand the spirit and the power of the Lord, I'm going to tell you right now. You need a man? Come close to my man in Jerry Hanna. He's going to find one of them sons for you. He's right. going to find one of them sons for you to shut your mouth. And if you're lucky, you're going to knock that back loose later. Right. You're going to knock it loose later. You're going to be waking up Sunday morning singing, cleaning, sweeping, cooking, doing every goddamn thing. Shut your mouth. Love to shut it. Read. Come on, This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Uh -huh. Words, submit yourself onto your own husband. Okay. What? Onto your own husband. Onto what? Onto your yeah. own husband. Yeah. Why? Submit yourselves to your own husband. You don't have your own husband. You don't have your own husband. Oh, that's your husband? How you know what That's your husband there. What's, what's the name of that instrument? What's the name of that instrument right there, Kika? What's the brand? What's the brand? What's the brand? I, I don't know. I can't see it. Go ahead. Sing me a song, sis. Go ahead. Play me a song, sis. I'm trying to tell you. You just found your purpose in life. 
You just found it today. You walking around DC looking all crazy, pushing this whole shopping cart. You just found some good purpose today, and it took a man to show it to you. Right. It took a man to show it to you. You don't understand this world. You don't understand what's really going on. You want to destroy a nation, you destroy men. You want to save and build a nation, you empower men. And to empower men, we're going to need our women to be a helpmate. Right. To be a helpmate. Not to be a damn adversary, not to go serve the white man, not to try to be some priest and some prophet, and you put the Bible away. How Christian are you? Right. You put the Bible away. You put the word of God away to sit there and be a fool. Read it again. Now go. One, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head. Is what? Is the head. Is what? Is the head. That man is supposed to be the head. God He's supposed to be in charge of you. God Say it again. God is the head. Where is that written? In the Bible. Show it to me. God is the head. Show it to me. We to show it to me. You ain't got to show me nothing. Because you don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. You don't know where it is. Just tell me where it is. I'll find it. Get Genesis 1 and 1. All right? Let's, let's just get... And what does it say? What does it say? Just get her face. I didn't even see her face because this is how far a woman will go in her delusion just to not submit to a man. She will never be this defiant against some African some East Indian, and surely not the white man. Right. But her own black brothers, a woman will go to tremendous lengths of holding a delusion instead of submitting and learning and being empowered and lifted up. So Genesis 1 says what? God is your head? Genesis 1 says God is your head? Genesis 1 said God is your head? Genesis 1, did it say God is your head? You don't understand. I trained for this thing here. I'm trying to tell you. Listen. Listen, hold on. Genesis 1. What does it say? You, 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 like, she, she loading a little bit slow. We, we, we said that about 10 minutes ago. It, it now registers. Genesis 1. Does it say God is your head? Does it say God is your head? The Bible said you're homeless. I'll show it to you in the Bible. I'll show it to you right after the Bible says you're homeless. Genesis 1, what does it say? What does it say? What does it, read it. She said, just because she don't want to answer. She said, Genesis 1 says God is her head. You're a liar. You're a liar. Read. The book of Genesis. Liar. Chapter 1, verse 1. When you say, I'm what? I'm jealous? You need to put on that mic and stop yelling. You need to put on that mic and stop yelling. I'm jealous of what? What, what, are, what am I jealous of? Because I'm big and strong. Right. What does Genesis 1 say? You see, I don't need no mic. I don't need no mic. <laughs> Read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh -huh. And the earth was... Oh, that's just one. Read it again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Where does it say he's your head? Where does it say it? Where does it say it? It don't say it. Give me what you got. Come on, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know. Uh -huh. But I would have you know. I would inform you. Go ahead. That the head. That what? That the head. Uh -huh. Of every man is Christ. The head of every man is our King Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman. What? The head of the woman. Are you a woman? What do I look like? If, I just ask him. What you might identify as something else. He identifies as a priest. What do I a do? priest is a masculine term. So I had to ask you, are you a woman? Jesus said what? Are you a woman? We shall be what? You're, you're a woman? Jesus said we shall be what? Are you a woman? That's all. You female? Are you female? I ain't got to answer that dumb question. All right, no sweat. I, I, I know. Listen, I'm familiar with that black woman attitude. I let, listen, finally she gets loose now. Finally she's feeling her femininity now. She like, I ain't got to answer that dumb question. You know what I mean? She, she get, she get, you getting right into that femininity. A priest wouldn't talk like that. Right. <laughs> A priest ain't going to talk like that. Read. 
and the head of the woman. Uh -huh. is, listen, listen up closely. I'm about to show you your head in the Bible. It's the man. What? It's the man and the head of the woman. And the head of what? And the head of the woman uh -huh. is the man. It's who? It's the man. It's who? It's the man. I thought God was your head. I thought God was your head. Yep. The head of the woman is the man. You Christian woman, you ain't got no relationship with God. You have a relationship with that man in your bed. That's why when he, you in, the, you in the bed with him and he driving it in, you say what? Oh God, oh God, oh God. Right. Cause you're talking to him. Cause that's your head. That's your head. Oh God, oh my God. You're oh God, you know, oh God. God, oh God! Yeah, I brought back memories there. Do you, do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> but I will have you know, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. That's a structure. God first, then Christ. Then the man, then the woman. Right. Listen, the faster you play your position, the more you can win. Everybody reach all about the commanders this weekend because they're winning. Because people play in their positions. When you're out of position, you're going to lose. And black woman, you're out of order. Right. You're out of position. Play your part so we can win. You try to do my job. Do your job so we can win. Because you've been trying to do it yourself for the last 50, 60 years and you fill the prisons with young black men. You fill the graves with young black men. You fill the abortion clinics with young black men because they all come from single family homes headed by who? Some woman married to God. God is not your husband. You should get a husband. You deserve a husband. Every woman on this earth deserves a husband. You deserve a husband. You deserve somebody to look at you like you're so beautiful and tender and precious and willing to take a life and give his life for you. You deserve it, but you don't have it because you want to be a man. Now you ask me why I talk so loud. You got Isaiah 58 and 1? Let me get Isaiah 58 and 1 real quick for the priest. Let's get Isaiah 58 and 1 real quick. God, listen. I, I ain't get her. Listen. She close, she pick up the Bible. She close the Bible. She she pick up the um the, the little lap guitar. She close it. You know what your problem is? And the general told me this a, a while ago. Our women have been raised so weak they become Korean quitters. You just quit on the Bible because you couldn't find it. You pull out some harp to try to damn sing me to sleep. That ain't work, you pack that away. Now you jump into something else. Now you see the trend, jump from man to man to man until you can marry God. Right. Stop quitting right. and get to work. Right. Read. Oh God. Book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Go ahead. Cry aloud. Say it again. Cry aloud. Say it again. Cry aloud. Go ahead. Spare not. Uh -huh. Lift up thy voice like a trump. Why am I yelling? Because God said, cry aloud. Spare not. And lift up my voice like a trumpet. For a reason. Let me tell you the reason. Keep going. Go, go. Consider me not. Go ahead. And shoot my people their transgression. And what? And shoot my people their transgression. God said to cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. And show God's people our transgressions. We don't sinned against the Lord, man. We done been doing wrong against God. And God ain't on our side no more. And he wants us back. And the only way we come back is by playing our part. Playing our position. Obeying him. Honoring the system he put in place. Honoring the structure he put in place. You ask me why I cry aloud. Let me tell you why I cry aloud. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. I have what? I have seen this people. God saw black, Hispanic, and Native Indian people, and he told Moses, who was in charge of Israel, listen, man, I've seen these people. I, I've looked at these people. Go ahead. And behold, uh -huh. it is a stiff-necked people. And behold, it is what? A stiff-necked people. And behold, it is what? A stiff-necked people. Go ahead. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wet hot. Against them. We stiff neck, thank you, brother. 
I appreciate it. I saw you listening, man. At first, it wasn't you wasn't agreeing, but you're listening. Listen, man. You're right. You're right. You're listening. God said, "Cry aloud, because our people are stiff-necked. You know what? We hard-headed. You can't tell black people." Over there is right and over there is wrong. Look over there. No. Look over there. No. Woman shut your mouth. I ain't got to shut my mouth. Get your husband. My husband is gone. You're stiff necked. Right. You're stiff necked and hard headed. Right. That's why God ain't getting letting you have no man. That's why that bed at night is cold. That pillow is cold. You wish you could buy a bigger pot so you had more people to cook for. Let that kill a woman. You cooking for just you alone. You get tired of cooking for you alone. You wish you could make a spread for a man to come in there and eat and unzip his pants and burp and get a good damn drink and say, baby, thank you. I love you. This meal was so damn good. Come here, give me some sugar. You wish you could have that. But you done this, you done piss the Lord off. And now you're out one of the streets, crazy and delusional out your mind, so you don't have a husband at home. You don't have your husband at home. You're stiff neck, man. You are stiff neck woman, man. Go ahead. What you got? What you got? Go ahead. Look at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud. Stand not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. Right. Show my people their transgressions. Now she said, How do I know she's homeless? Give me um, give me the ox know which is his um his his stable. Isaiah 1 and 3, real quick, please. I'm going to show you. You can how you know I was homeless, because I'm a prophet of God. Raised by prophets of God. This man right here raised me from a babe in D.C. That's good. That's, that's six sheep, General Kabbalah Mark. He speak the truth, received the truth, and taught me how to see it for what it is. Let me show you. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox knoweth his owner, uh -huh. and the ass his master screwed. Meaning these is two dumb animals. An ox and a donkey. That's what an ass is. An ass is a male donkey. And they're two dumb animals. And an ox could smell his way back to his house. A donkey could smell his way to his master's crib. He put his nose in the air and they just smell it and they know they're the master. But what? Go come, come. But what, boy? But Israel. But Israel. That woman in the white? Israel. Go ahead. Do not know. My people do it not consider. But you don't know your own house. You don't consider God. God said the head of every woman is the man. That's right. so, woman, if you want to be righteous in God's sight, obey your husband. Don't just obey him when you want a foot a rod for pleasure. Right. Sometimes you're too damn carnal. Carnality is good sometimes, but sometimes you're too damn carnal. Right. Obey that man. He is going to take a life and give his life for you. And that's the word of God. Yeah, Babylon is falling.